With the full final release of Android P just around the corner, we're really starting to see the benefits of Project Treble. Hello there, my name's Gary Sims, and this is Android Authority. Now, if you would like to understand more about Project Treble and how it will give us faster Android upgrades in the future, please let me explain. When I was at uh, Google I.O. this summer, I was able to catch up with Ilian Malchev, who is the leader of Project Treble over there at Google. I was able to spend some time talking about Project Treble and I was able to capture some of that on camera. So as we look now at Project Treble and what it means for the future of our Android versions, I'm gonna be also showing you some of the things that uh, Ilian had to say about the subject. Okay, so first of all, one of the biggest complaints that there is about Android is this version fragmentation, that you kind of get one phone is kind of running one version, then another phone is running an older version, and the OEMs don't seem to upgrade, particularly the major version numbers don't seem to come through, and if they do come through, it can be very slow, it's a very trickle-down process, sometimes maybe taking a year or even more from when Google released a version of Android until it finally hits a handset. Now there are several different reasons why that process can be slow. Some of it is actually the fault of the carriers. However, there is also some technical issues that Project Treble aimed to solve. Let's listen to what Ilian has to say. Great to see you. Do you want to tell me a little bit about Project Treble? Yeah, uh, Project Treble is um, how we uh, are solving Android's biggest problem, which is that of uh, version fragmentation, which um, you know I hope everybody watching this video is painfully familiar with. Um, the problem at its heart is uh, two parts. There's a technical problem and an operational problem. The technical problem is really because Android grew far too quickly um, in, in its rapid growth. We, we, we didn't have time to design it so that its top piece is properly abstracted away from its bottom piece, with the bottom piece being that which is specific to the hardware oh, that Android yeah. is running on. Yeah. Um, and this is what we did. Um, we introduced um, upwards of uh, 60 interfaces um, that we introduced to the underbelly of the OS as we went along. Um, why that's important? It's because these interfaces enable us to develop the top piece of it independently from the bottom piece uh, and assign the bottom piece to the companies that properly own it, such as uh, Qualcomm, companies that make mobile CPUs, right? So as you can see with Project Treble, there's been a now a hard line drawn which separates the parts that Google work on, the framework and all that kind of stuff, and the parts that the OEMs and the uh, SOC manufacturers work on. In fact, this hardware abstraction layer has over 60 interfaces defined that allow the OEMs to create drivers and hooks into the hardware that they know will work with what Google is expecting on the upper half of the whole uh, Android operating system. And this has been no mean feat because before that kind of demarcation line was absolutely all over the place. Some parts were in the framework, some parts were down in the kernel, and it was a real mishmash of where the kind of line would be drawn between Google and let's say an OEM uh, like uh, Qualcomm. And as well as aligning all those interfaces to be in one place, there's also been the issue of speed. These interfaces have to be very, very fast. Every time you have an interface, it can potentially slow things down because you have to transfer data and it has to take this kind of route through this interface. Now these interfaces that they've designed are actually very, very fast so that when you're doing things like multimedia and there's cameras and video and sound, all that kind of stuff can flow through these interfaces with very, very little impact on the overall performance. Android releases uh, happen in August historically, and then a company like a company that makes mobile CPUs like Qualcomm, it would take them a few months to, to do their work, and then you already are at the end of the year. So if you're a device manufacturer, you don't have enough time to do your work and launch a device for the holiday season. So what we did operationally this year, uh, in the past few months, is we absorbed that uh, work by the mobile CPUs so that it happens in parallel with Android's core development. And therefore gaining several months? Over a quarter, three or four right, months at right, times. Okay. And three four months is an eternity in our industry, yeah. uh, and that in turn allows the device makers to do their customizations on top of, uh, on top of Android with plenty of time to launch and upgrade to the latest Android. 
And as you heard Eliane say, that means we've saved three or four months in the overall cycle of the uh, kind of release of Google until it hits the OEMs. And hopefully that means for Android P and further on, we should see much faster updates. Now, obviously, as I said, there's still the issue of some of the carriers who have to go and do all their testing and they add in all their stuff they want to add on top. But in terms of the relationship between uh, Google and uh, the SOC makers like Qualcomm and Google and an actual OEM like OnePlus, like Sony, then that relationship now is much closer, technically we're talking now, so that the actual changes in Google can flow through to uh, the end user much quicker. And we really did see the benefits of Android P when the Android P beta was released because it came out on phones from seven different OEMs at the same time as Google released it. And that's partly because now OEMs have to be able to run the open source version of Android on all of their phones. It's one of the requirements for getting Android certification. And because the open source version is being updated all the time and the OEMs can stay in sync with how these changes are happening, they can always make sure that their phones run the latest version. And then when finally Google kind of, you know, draw a line and say, right, this is version eight or this is version nine, whatever they're gonna do, then actually the OEMs are already prepared because they've been keeping up to date with Google's development and their phone already runs Google's latest version. And, uh, you know, it's evidenced by the fact that we have seven new devices in yeah. addition to Pixel. Um, so that's Android P will be on seven different devices and that's all basically down to the work of Trevor. Yes, also the, the speed work of, of the... Yes. And all the OEMs, of course, <laughs> you won't say the OEMs didn't do that, but the, 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 the speed of, of that, because it's coming out now on the Pixel, but also on all these other devices at the same time. Yes, I mean, the entire Android uh, organization had to do a lot, a lot, a lot of work to make this happen, and you know, I'm happy that finally the results are beginning to manifest themselves. And so there you have it, Project Treble. Now, personally, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this will impact the upgrades to our handsets. We should be seeing much more faster upgrades. We should see handsets released with the latest version of uh, Android on them rather than one from, you know, kind of a year ago. And I think this is a very, very positive step for the Android ecosystem. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Gary Sims and this is Android Authority. You know what I'm going to ask. Please subscribe, please like and please share this video. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.